Hey, how's it going? And today I'm excited to bring you this tutorial regarding Glycon and Lightwave. In case you don't know, Glycon is a relatively affordable program. I think it's just $99. And it allows you to capture motion capture in virtual reality and then import it into a program. There's limitations right now. You can only move the upper body, but with five trackers, you can move full body. And so that's what I'm most interested in. And I think the program is fantastic. I mean, Chilton Webb, what he's, where he's taken this program from where it started to where it is now is pretty amazing. And so there's no motion capture suit really needed, just some trackers and your virtual reality set. So I'm using the Oculus desktop system right now, so I'm just doing the upper body. But I made videos in the past about how to import the motion capture data. And to me, that's almost one of the most important things because you can have the motion capture data, but if you can't get it into the 3D program, then what's the point? I'm trying to stay current on how to do it. So the videos that I've made in the past no longer apply. They don't work with the most current version of Glycon and the most current version of Lightwave. So what I'm gonna show you today is the updated process of how you have to do it. To be quite honest with you, it was a process to figure out how you could do it but this way I think is relatively painless, so I'm gonna show you right now how to do it. Here we are in Lightwave, and I'm just gonna clear my scene, make sure I don't have anything on there that's not supposed to be. And what I'll do is I'm gonna go in, the first thing I'm gonna do is I've already rendered out my motion capture data from Glycon. I'm gonna show you where the first problem that I encountered, and then I'll show you the process. So the first problem I had was, the old way was, I would just go into load, import fbx import and this is uh, the glycon folder this folder is automatically generated when you load in glycon and then when you export your bbh files they'll come out this way they'll look it'll say 3d object that kind of threw me off but it's actually an fbx file so these are some sample ones that i did earlier i'll just grab one of them here and i'll go okay now watch what happens now before i'd say yeah just leave these on the default bake rotations lightweight bones and go okay <laughs> okay, so this is not what we want at all. So I have no idea what went wrong here. So I realized, uh-oh, I'm going to have some trouble here. So, but I have a, a workflow that works. So here it goes. So this is much a, a note to myself as it is a video for everyone. What we have to do is we have to actually go in through the interchange now. And I'll go to that same motion capture file. So I'll go to file and it, where is it? It's on my desktop here. It's in my Glycon files here. And I'll just grab that one's fine. I don't, I don't even know what the animation is. And I'll go, okay. And of course you could delete some of these, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And we go, okay, it comes in. And then we hit that button and there comes in our rig. But look at this thing, it's, it's ginormous, right? Now he's added this, I think it's called the face mesh. Face mesh, that's hard to say. But if you just click on it and you don't want it, just get rid of it because I don't I'm not sure what it's for. All we're primarily interested is in the motion capture data. So it really doesn't matter that that rig is so big. We just want the motion capture data. So what we do is we're just gonna come make sure this is very important. You gotta make sure you're on the rig. So you gotta make sure you're on the object, the skeleton mixable rig. You're gonna go to the scene editor here, and then you're gonna click select all bones of current object then it should look like that. Then we just minimize this, and then we're gonna hit F2 on the keyboard, bring up our motion mixer, and we just click Create Actor. It doesn't matter what the actor is called, so we'll just go XXX and go OK. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go Create Motion, and then we can just call, I don't know what this is, so I'll just say Animation, and we'll just do it from zero to 120 frames, and we'll go OK. So it records out the animation. Then we're gonna come down here to motion menu and we're gonna save that motion out. And I'll just leave it named animation and it's gonna be stored as an HMOT file. So we'll just go save. And it saves out that motion. And basically that's all we, we need. So this process involves converting the FBX into an HMOT file, the motion capture data. So we don't need the FBX anymore, we're done with that. But we do need that HMOT file. The other thing I noticed is it's important not to change your frames down here, leave the frame set. It comes in, it looks like at negative one, so just leave it at that and start it at that. Now we're just gonna go ahead and clear our scene. Now what we gotta do is go back in and get that same Mixamo rig. So it should come in and T-pose. So I go in out, I go to the interchange, I go to read file, file, and my rig is in the downloads here. I just downloaded it today. And it's Ybot, go okay comes in here and then we just import it 
by clicking that button. This is important again, is make sure you're on the rig. So go to objects and there, and we do the same thing we just did. So we're gonna go to the scene editor, scene editor, where is it? Here it is, and we're gonna go select all bones of current object. Just minimize this. Don't click anything else on the screen because you don't want those arrows to fall off. You hit F2, and we're gonna call create actor again, and we're gonna call this Mr. T and go, okay. And those bones will fall off once you do that. And you should see the number 68. So now all we have to do is use the motion mixer to put our motion onto our character. And I've done another video on the motion mixer, so I don't know how much people use it, but I'm certainly glad they have it now because it's the only way I know of to get the motion capture data in. So then we go to add items, and then we're gonna go load motion, and we'll go back to the folder where I stored everything, and we'll get the one that says animation, open, and it imports it. And then all we have to do is click here, add motion, and click on the timeline here. And then if we minimize this and hit play, I feel like I need a drum roll. Hopefully the, the animation comes in. And it does. So he, the character was just sitting at a desk talking like that. And so, my friends, that's the easy way to do it. I'm very excited about this program. I just wanted to make sure that I was staying current with how I can get the motion capture data into Lightning. I think this program has a lot of potential. I'm excited about trying the Vive trackers and seeing just how far I can go with it. But the program is virtually, it's really affordable and I think it's uh, worth experimenting with. I think it's a lot of fun once you figure this part out of it out. Okay, so take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.